Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on tonight's show, as I head back, as I talked to a derby player a couple of days ago, actually yesterday to be exact, and now I have on the Kennedy side for the Kennedy Eagles uh, of Waterbury, Connecticut, a uh, sophomore, Joseph Fasano. I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, it's awesome to be able to to speak with NVL players because obviously I, I broadcast in the NVL. I do basketball. I do football. And it's always good to see the NVL succeed. And for Kennedy, as you and I were just going back and forth a little bit, you just got your sixth win against Crosby today, a very one-sided game in your favor, as I mentioned. Uh, you guys only had six wins last year, so you matched your win total. Yes, yes, that's actually a thing that we um were really excited about after today's win, you know, picking up the game against Crosby. It was our si this is our sixth win. We're now six and five and just a little bit over halfway through the season. And we're, you know, we're really happy that we've already progressed so much from last year. And um we got a couple more games that we definitely should win and we're we, we're looking forward to locking in the spot in the state tournament this year. So we're excited to see what the rest of the season has played out for us. And not even the state tournament, if you continuously win games or just keep that win column at a certain margin, you may qualify also, too, for the NVL tournament, which, to my recollection, and I'm sure Sarlo knows, and maybe you may know, when was the last time Kennedy was in an NVL tournament game? Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm sure Sarlo knows. I'm not. I Off the top of my head, at least, I'd say five years ago, I, I, at least at minimum, I, since... As far as I've known, we haven't been in it. We've qualified for states. Last year was the first time since a few years, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. But um, NVLs, I'm not sure for a while. I'm going to have to text, you know, I'm going to have to text him and ask him because I'm sure he'll watch this episode and be like, it was this year, it was this year. No problem, text me and tell me, you know. Yeah, we'll definitely know. So what has been the biggest difference to go from just six wins last year and then you still have – what, 11 games remaining, something like that, right? So what's been the biggest difference from last year to this year? Uh, you know, I think the biggest difference has, so far, we had a really young team last year. You know, we didn't lose a lot of guys, like, from seniors and everything. We also acquired a lot of new pieces. Like, you know, our biggest – one of our biggest pieces right now is our – we acquired this freshman from Westside Middle School, uh, Jaden Lopez. And, you know, we put a big role on him as soon as he got here. Like, uh, first game, he's – we had him at the lower part of the lineup, but he had a multi-hit game the first game, and he's our starting shortstop and leadoff hitter. And, uh, yeah, and he's 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 owned his spot, though. He's definitely, definitely earned his spot in the field. He's, he's been hitting extremely well, making good plays at short, and uh, definitely a big – big pickup for us as freshmen we got a solid young team this year so we're good good uh look forward to seeing like what our young team could do in the next couple of years as well no I know Sarla was telling me about your catcher too Rodriguez the football player correct yeah he was a, he's also a huge huge pickup for us as well one of our best hitters in the lineup um catcher uh huge arm from behind the plate great great athlete all around yeah, we uh he transferred to Kennedy this year and he's definitely a big pickup for us as well. As long for we got another transfer this year, uh Yoandi Calado from he's our third baseman. You know, really good athlete. He pitches as well too. And uh just like a bunch of athletes on our team that we've got this year and just young guys that want to be out on the field and it really helps us. And when you speak about the youth too, I mean you're only a sophomore. You mentioned the freshman that came over from West Side as well. I mean, it, it sounds like to me that this team is not only young in terms of grade level, but also the fact that, you know, Coach Sarla will have this group together, hopefully, God willing, for the next couple of years. So I can only imagine what the ceiling is for this team beyond this year, especially with what you've done getting to six wins this year, surpassing or hopefully surpassing what you had total last year. Yeah, right. I, th I think it definitely will play into a factor of what we do this year and what we have for the next couple of years to come, especially since – a lot of us are have been growing up around each other, you know, since it's we've all like played little league ball or like middle school ball with each other, and just that chemistry, like knowing each other. As so far, I think it plays a lot into how we play as a team because we already have that chemistry going into high school season, and us being a young team, I think it will help us a lot into the future with our our chemistry and everything, and just everyone playing smoothly together. Is it fair to say that you know? 
when you think about Waterbury, right, I think of kind of like basketball, even football too. It, it, to me, it seems like when there's very talented players, it seems like they get poached, they get taken, or they go different directions for various reasons. You know, how important is it? And I don't know if you're the captain, you can correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe you have an opportunity to be that in the future if you're not already. How important is it to keep this core, which sounds like, again, a very young team, but has the capability of doing some very successful things for a baseball program that I know has been, in terms of consistency, it's been difficult. But it sounds like there's a chance where this could be a nice run for the Kennedy Eagles baseball team. How important, how important is it to keep this core together and not lose anybody? Yeah, I think it's definitely big. And like you were saying, I uh, Coach Sarlo, he promoted me to captain this year. It's my first year being a captain, and um, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm really appreciative that he trusts me with that role. And I, I just, I take it into like, I take it into my as my job to make sure. You know, everyone's out there. I I, I want I just want to make sure the team has fun. I I want to make sure the team has fun because I want them to want to be there. I think that's a big part of the game that a lot of guys miss out. You know, I think they think like winning, you just have to like you know be so like confident and uh, confident plays a big part into it as well. But like not as serious. Like I I think you could loosen up a little bit as well. And I think as long as we're having fun out there, I think it helps us play better and play better as a team because when we're not having fun I don't want the guys just to be sitting there on the bench like you know like why am I here you know I want them to enjoy being on the field I I I make sure everyone's up on the fence every inning just cheering on their teammates you know if one guy strikes out pick them up just normal stuff like that I think really helps us as a team and you want to have fun because the game of baseball is 90 percent mental 10 percent physical if you're not having fun and you're not being able to relax yourself as someone that I played throughout college the biggest thing for me was the mental side, right? If you if you don't have it up here, then you're not going to be able to perform. And I think that's a big part of it. And sticking to that mental side, you know, to stay with the baseball fact of Waterbury baseball, right? I know that, and I've heard this in football too. It's it's crazy how, and I don't know if the baseball team is the same, but um, when they look at the schedule and they see teams outside of the NVL, more so outside of Waterbury, right? So like Ansonia, I know you guys beat Ansonia for baseball, but if you look at other teams in the Valley, it's like, it's automatically an L before you even step on the field. And the question I have for you is, and I'm sure it's, it's difficult. I'm sure it's for you and probably some of the other guys trying to rally the troops. How important is that to erase that from the membranes, you know, the brains of these young men and be like, hey, we can compete. We're not just a Waterbury school. We can compete. No, yeah, I think that's 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 a big – that's one of the biggest, I think, performances or transitions we made from last year, you know, because when we would play one of the – any of the Valley teams, really, it would be – we would be done in five innings, you know. It would be like 10-0, 15-0, you know. It was just, I think that really soaked up like the fun that we got to have. But um, you know, when we played the Valley teams, we've only got mercy one time so far this year, and we that's again that was against St. Paul, and they're one of the best teams in the league. You know, like they're gonna go far in the NVL and state tournament this year for sure. And um, I think that's that's definitely a big a big uh, transition that we had. You know, just enjoying the game a lot more, and I think us being able to compete better. I guess the teams allowed us to be more involved in the game. You know, because like it's a lot easier for us like we'll be a lot more energetic and into the games against like the Crosby's and the Wilby's and like the in the you know careers those games that is a lot more easier for us to win and I just we try to make sure that we transfer that energy and like that effort into the games where it's harder for us to win like you said in Sonia we took in Sonia we only beat them two to zero and that was you know we strung along a couple hits together and we played good defense against them I think we just have to take that energy and like that effort and like and put those against the better teams and it will give us a better shot at winning. Have you noticed the change a little bit? And I, I understand that there has been some games where it's been tough. Obviously when you get to the Valley and you face the St. Paul's, I know Derby was a, was a close game a little bit. I know it was a high score and a fair. Um, when you face teams like that, it becomes a little bit more difficult, right? So what has it been like for the team and for yourself too, being a first year captain? Uh, you know, we just try to try to have a short term memory. You know, if if it is a loss, we just try to, you, you know, dwell on it, like 
care about what it would like reflect on the game as well, but just try to move on to the next one because I think last year we just kind of were so focused on like, oh, going to the game, we're gonna get mercy. You know, we're gonna be out in five innings. Like a lot of a lot of our teammates last year were just worried about what they were doing after the game, you know. But I think this year it's a it's a big difference. Like every, people are like wanting to come to our games. People are wanting to play. And I think just that like that work ethic and that like that oomph like wanting to be there, I think is helping us a lot compete against the harder teams, whether when or not. Now, I did notice that you played for a program that my buddy Howie Deach used to coach for. I know I think he coached you during the winter time, and he told me that you could swing it a little bit, that you could swing the stick. Talk to me about kind of your approach at the plate and how you go about, because I know you can pitch too. We'll get to that in a second. But talk to me about your your hitting ability, you know, as far as the batter, you know, the batting box. Yeah, you know. I'm really I'm a big situational hitter like I'm just trying to do whatever I can for the team you know if there's running a scoring position where the outfielders are because a lot of teams know like I'm a big pole hitter you know I try to I'm, I've worked on it a lot this offseason trying to work on the middle opposite away field because a lot of teams now as soon as I get up it's just shift to the left you know but um yeah it, it really depends on situational like how many outs there are where the base runners are like I've had a lot of situations where I've come where there's been guys on third and second, like less than two outs. That, that in those cases, I just try to hit like hard line drives, hit keep it on the ground, keep anything out of the air. That's what I try to work on a lot because I've noticed I've struggled, you know, like hitting a lot of pop flies last season so far. So this off season, I just kind of drove it on, like you know, staying more down hard through the ball and uh, be getting more hitters counts, like not striking out as much. If I go down 0-2, just get the count back to full or foul off any close pitches. Just uh, try to battle as much as I can at the plate and just wait for my pitch and then do the best I, best I can just work out the field. How, how tough is it? And, you know, I've, it's, I've always wanted to ask players, and I always forget to, but I didn't forget this time. When you go from – because you played for TCB during the previous summer, correct? Yes. So, obviously, you're seeing better velocity. You're seeing guys who could huck it a little bit. They can get the, you know, the velo, better breaking balls, et cetera. How how tough is it to go from that? And I'm not disrespecting majority of pitchers in the NBL. It's it's kind of more so again, it's a different brand of baseball. Not everybody's throwing that same velo. It's a little bit different, a little bit pitching style, right? How difficult is it for you as far as your approach at the plate? Because, you know, maybe you'd have to be a tick faster in the summer. Now you kind of have to wait back a little bit. Not saying you got to rock yourself to sleep, but you have more time, I guess. Is it hard for you? Because it's almost like there's two approaches for you in two different ways. Does that make sense? No, totally, totally. I actually, I struggled a lot from that standpoint last year, you know, um, not being able to switch from the harder pitchers to the slower pitchers. And this year I thought of it more as like, no disrespect to any teams or any pitchers, but against the teams where we know we're going to see a slower pitcher, I just try to treat it as like a batting practice round, you know, knowing that we're going to, especially playing like a harder team later in the week, I'll just try to think of like it, like those games, you know, not sit back as much, but just treat it with, with more confidence during my at bat, you know, just working on simple tasks, like, you know, not dropping my back shoulder, trying to hit more line drives, work middle opposite field, just trying to use the more, more field and just have like simple, small goals each at bat to focus on during those games where, you know, my at bats don't really mean as much and just where at times I could really get personal work in rather than, you know, worrying about like all the pressure if well, I'm gonna get this hit or not because it's uh, when we play lesser like lower level teams like that it's, I have a lot of pressure relieved off of like our middle of the lineup so I could get to just focus more on how to like approach better for one of the games where it really matters I remember when I was growing up when I would face or rather when my teammates because I played for Waterbury Legion which now does not exist but they had some you know fantastic players Christian Cuevas you know, the Murphy brothers, uh, Daryl Wilson, who was a center fielder, Tim Bissett, who his brothers played a Holy Cross. I could go on and on and on. But I remember them telling me when I was a youngin back in the day that they said it was so hard for them when they faced guys who threw from either low three quarters or even submarine because they said it was very easy for them because they knew they weren't seeing 90. They were going to see a lot of junk, a lot of stuff to try to chase. But they said it was so easy for them to get back into bad habits, like you just said, maybe dipping your shoulder, maybe trying to do something with your swing to try to make up for that lost or more time that you have. And now you mentioned how last year for you, 
it was, maybe it was a little bit more difficult. What did you do in particular to make sure that those bad habits uh, did not come about in games that you were facing lesser speed from the pitchers? Yeah, you know, I, th- I feel like last year my approach was like, oh, I see a guy throwing slow down the middle, you know, try to hit a home run. I, I feel like last year that being my approach, just swinging all or nothing every pitch, it kind of forced me to, you know, everything go up, straight up in the air, and I kind of fell out of my own, like, my own swing. And this year now when we see guys like that, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Joe, go up there, like, go tank one, go rip one. Like, I'm just like, I'm just like, no, I'm just going to try to hit hard line drives, hard line drives. That's all I think in my head every time is just – like hit a hard line drive because every time I think that in my head, like good outcomes will come. Then those harder, like hits, extra base hits, you know, doubles, triples, whatever it may be will come because I'm just thinking in my head, you know, just hit it hard somewhere instead of rather swing as hard as I can every single pitch. You know, I think my approach has changed a lot and that has helped me a lot this year for sure. That's a solid approach for sure. I think it's smart to be able to stay with that. And if you can, you'll definitely go farther, especially too, as you, continuously grow in the game of baseball um now as we look at kind of the upcoming schedule for you guys uh you know you took care of Crosby as you mentioned you've got Watertown Seymour Wilby and Naugatuck so you've got a copper team a brass team an iron team and obviously Watertown being iron as well um when you think about kind of you know, I'm sure Coach Sarlo, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I don't know. Maybe he mentioned, you know, don't look past the team that's in front of you, right? Can never do that. Um, but you're two wins away from making the state tournament and qualifying, not just getting in because you got to be a fill-in. You're actually qualified. You got eight wins. Um, talk to me about kind of for you being the captain, keeping the young men focused, not looking too far ahead at, you know, okay, we're going to get a win here and get a win here, and there's our eight, and that's it. We're We're happy with that. You want to get more than just eight. Yeah, for sure. I he, Like you said, Sarlo definitely just – he doesn't care about any later games in the season. He's just trying to win the game that we have next, you know. And um, like we're saying – like you said, we're playing Watertown actually this Wednesday, and it's a game that we really want to take. We want to take that win because, you know, we have two games that we know we can win later in the season, but we want to we want to get more than – like our goal for this year – we really want to get up to 500. You know, that would be a big goal for us, especially coming off of a hard season last year. But, um, yeah, I think just uh, us approaching each game, just uh, so, like from, so much of the standpoint as just trying, like focusing on the game that we have, you know, because I feel like when we feel like, oh, we're going to lose this game or we're going to win this game right in the I, – I don't like how we think like that. I, I just – I want to just – play as hard as we can and, and, you know, after seven innings or however, however many else it may be, just the outcome is the outcome. As long, I just want us to leave everything we have out on the field. That's all, that's all I ask from the team. I got to ask, what's in the Spotify for the Fasano music? What kind of music are you listening to? Is it rap? Is it country? What is it? Well, yeah, you know, um, me being um one of like the more, like guys on the team and it's nothing against the other team but they they trust me with they trust me with the aux you know, I'm, I'm on the speed i bring the speaker every game every practice for those guys because i i like i really like for us to just have a good time like you know i want i want us to come to practice but i want us to have an assertive practice but so like i'll, I'll make sure we have fun i'll bring the speaker every time every game during warm-ups but yeah i i try to i try to i have a little bit of rap i have some r&b for like the weekend practices you know try to get have like a slower like practice for the guys and then we have a lot of hispanic and uh, dominicans on our team so i have a, I have a little bit of dominican music in there for them and uh, i try to mix it up for them every now and then so they make sure they know that i uh that i know that they're there but yeah i just try to make sure the team knows that i appreciate all of them like because i feel like when they see that it uh, makes it easier for them to enjoy playing and i, I think it helps us a lot for uh, chemistry and uh, team standpoint so what's the one song either during the weekend or maybe kind of during practice time when games are not happening where the that song kind of gets the team going? What song is that? Oh, we got um we got a couple songs. Uh there's our our uh, go-to song on away games when we're getting off the bus is uh, Who Wants Smoke by um G Herbo and Lil Durk and uh, 21 Savage and all of them. Yeah, I don't know if it's it definitely if you want to play it, play the clean version, but it's yeah, it's definitely one of our go tos. It gets it gets the team hype and it gets definitely gets them ready for the game. So you trying to get Sarlo to listen to rap music? Is that what it is? 
he actually he he, I'm, he listens to rap music. He does. He, really? um, he he's more of like a older older rap guy. So I'll play a couple of classics for him, and he'll he'll ask me like, oh, what do you know about this and stuff? And it's you know we have uh yeah he he actually he had, he has some some pretty diverse music taste. He, um I think growing up around around here he's um he's been exposed to the rap game. No, I think he definitely uh de he definitely got some good taste of rap music in him. He strikes me as a guy that has, and I didn't know he listened to rap music, so that's really cool. At least the older rap music. He probably has like Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., probably <laughs> older Jay Z, probably a little bit of Snoop Dogg in there too. Yeah, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be at practice. You know, he'll be throwing us BP, and I'll have his phone going on there with some old rap music, and it's 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 cool to see. Yeah, he's a good guy. Now he's he he really kind of embodies what Kennedy is, right? I mean. His dad was at the school before it was Kennedy. I think it was Leavenworth before that. And then obviously he came through, his son came through. I mean, he's he's a Kennedy lifer through and through. And he really represents the school and just kind of, he does everything for the kids, loves the kids and wants to be able to see everybody succeed, you know, and it's an awesome thing. Um, now, I did notice too on your Instagram, because I said you were married. So I was like, wait, what? But then it said to baseball. And I was like, oh, okay, now that makes sense. So you've been married to baseball since 2006. Talk to me about this relationship. Has it been kind of rocky? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I got in my bio married to the game since uh, May to 20, 22nd, 2006. That's the day I was born. And um, I think just yeah, growing up around growing up around uh, an athletic family. You know, my mom's my mom's side's uh, been like very athletic all around, and um, I think just being exposed to like that type of family and a hardworking family. And then falling in love with the game of baseball, I think I've got to be able to push that work ethic to something that I really enjoy doing. And um, you know, I I, I take it very seriously. I uh, I'm I, like every chance I get, I'll go my I'll go in my backyard, get some extra swings in, get some throws, and do whatever I can and just stay on top of my game. It's something I really take seriously. And um, even against like the lighter teams, I just I try to especially because you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. And that's a big thing that I have. Like, you, and you can also, you can never redo a first impression. That's so, that's something that I tell everyone, especially the team. Like, you know, if uh, you play a better Valley team and, you know, we strike out and like slam our bat and throw our helmet and stuff like that's, you only play those guys once a year. And if you, if they see that, that's like, Oh, they, they, that's what kid, that's what Kennedy is. You know, I don't want, I don't want teams to think that about me if they see me play one time and I strike out and I throw my bat or whatever. So I just try to take my game very seriously and, you know, uh, make sure I appear myself the best way I can to whoever's watching. Well, it's, I like that answer a lot. And I particularly am fond of the fact that you just said, you never know who's watching, right? You think of last year, <clears throat> part of me with St. Paul, right? They had Daniels, they had a bunch of dudes, you know, Daniels was getting looked at. I know he didn't get drafted and he went to UConn and he's tearing it up. But again, there were scouts at that game, right? So you just never know. Scout sees you or sees anybody and says, all right, I'm going to keep my tabs on this kid, you know, from afar, but just you never know. And then with you playing for TCB and such in the summer circuit, I'm sure there's scouts there. Maybe there's conversations. I don't know. I have no idea. But the point is, though, like you said, you just never know that first impression, first time, especially in baseball, because of the amount of competition that there is. You're competing with millions upon millions of ball players. You just never know. That first impression, like a job interview, is so huge. No, yeah, for sure. And it's something I really take uh, big upon, especially last year, you know, with us not having as a high competing team. Uh, every time we would get Mercy 10-0 or 15-0, be out in five innings, everyone, I would just try to keep the team and make sure, you know, my energy level was the same throughout the whole game. Because when other teams see that or the coaches see that, I just – I want if if, whoever, if anyone ever asks about like oh how is Joe Fasano how does he act as a player I want them to give the you know the most like uh, positive response possible I don't want anyone to have anything negative to say about me so I just try to you know bring energy and like love to my game and just play with you know like a little bit of swagger but not cockiness you know I just try to play and just do me, do me. That's smart, man. Hey, you know what? I really appreciate you coming on. Also, real quick too, you said your birthday was what May twenty sixth. May 22nd. Oh, so it's coming up then. Let's yeah, yeah. Let's it. Oh, well, happy birthday. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on, man. This was a lot of fun. Best of luck as far as the rest of the season. Get those eight wins, and I'd love to see Kennedy have an opportunity to be able to compete 
not just for the state tournament, but also too for the NBL tournament. I think it's great for the brass and just for Waterbury in general to see Waterbury teams other than Holy Cross, because they've been always very, very good. But to see another team besides them from Waterbury have an opportunity to get in. So best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Anytime. Now, wrap things up on the CT Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm Marjorie. Find them all. Through there, she did, everybody, and be well.